What's up guys, Adam Retro Moments here, standing outside Super Potato, but that's not what we're shaking out today. We are going to K-House. And here it is. It's more of an authentic looking store here in Japan. A lot of stores used to look like this and uh, there's still a lot of stores that uses this kind of style. Usually it's a bookshelf in the middle of everything and you have two sides to go into. A lot of CD stores, bookstores and game stores have this kind of design. So let's see if this dirty old uh, Japanese game store have anything to offer. Will I find cheaper prices in here? That's basically the mission of today. We got a silver GameCube here, loose, 1200 yen, so uh, around 11 bucks. Not the cheapest that I've ever seen, but uh, the price works, I guess. And up here we got some uh, accessories for PlayStation. Uh, and then we have a lot of boxed consoles here. PCFX, Wii, Sega Saturn. All stacked on the top of each other. Does it get more authentic than this? I don't think so. And here we have a Neo Geo AES going for 32,500 in the box. That's uh, not too shabby, although the box was uh, not in the best shape, so... Uh, so maybe it has the correct price after all. Here we got Mario Kart 8 wheels. Maybe not that interesting. Although I do have Switch and I do own Mario Kart 8. But the wheel, I don't know. Here we got some loose consoles. Saturn for 2600 yen, 25 bucks. We got a lot of Famicoms and Super Famicoms going for 2900 yen. So uh, 26 bucks, kinda. And here's the accessory for the Taito Train Simulator game. Pretty cool, you see that every once in a while. And then some old dirty stuff, PS2, PS3 box. You got the fishing thing there. We got a Super Scope for the Super Famicom. 28 bucks, not a bad deal, but uh, it's possible to find them cheaper. Dreamcast controller, 1700 yen, and uh, Xbox controllers, maybe not that interesting. And it seems like it's mixed stuff in here. Lethal Enforces, that's pretty cool. Konami's own light gun game, it was released for the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo. And here we got some adapter and Super Game Boy 2. Was only released in Japan and has the correct speed. The first one was actually way too fast and uh, this one added also the link cable feature. And here we have something very interesting. It's the Sufami Turbo for Super Famicom. An accessory you don't see every day and I think this is the first time I'm seeing it actually. Bandai made this to make uh, games at a cheaper rate and uh, also the games could share data between them. It was basically like Aladdin Deck Enhancer for those of you who know that device. And here we have Konami's own command controller going for 22 bucks. I've never tried this controller actually, so if you have, please tell me in the comments if it's worth getting. And uh, let's continue further here, we got the Super Famicom Super Mario World console case. Pretty neat, I've seen a lot of different versions of uh, this kind of case. No price tag on this one, but they're usually not that expensive actually. Now let's keep looking here, let's drag these old boxes out. Look at all these dusty controllers. Seems like they've been here for a while. Neo Geo AES controller, 36 bucks, not bad at all, but could have been in better condition for sure. And uh, here we got another AES controller, an AES controller for Saturn, okay. And we got a cool arcade stick for the Super Nintendo, 28 bucks for that. And uh, more arcade sticks for PlayStation, that one looks pretty good actually, 36 bucks. But let's keep going. So now we're getting into the Super Famicom and the Famicom games, and uh, here's a broken bag with the boxed Super Famicom games. Kinda strange, but at least there's some uh, good games in here. Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension, the best version of all the Dragon Ball Z games for the Super Famicom. So if you want to get one, get that one. No prices on that, so maybe it was just something that came in. 
so let's keep looking here seems like it's uh, all the bad games that is sorted out here in the bin in front of everything so let's uh, take a look in the shelf here let's jump over to some Famicom games here we got the uh, Goonies 2 for 700 yen 7 bucks and what else is here? Some boxed games. Operation Wolf, the light gun game for NES. In a plastic case for uh, 20 bucks. And here is a game from uh, Jaleco. Not sure what this is actually, but pretty cool artwork nevertheless. But uh, let's continue further in and uh, check out some uh, N64 here. DK64, 7 bucks. Animal Forest, 13 bucks. The exclusive uh, Japanese game. But uh, there's still some Super Famicom games here, so uh, let's check out more of those as well. And uh, here's a good one Final Fight Guy, 2100 yen. It's not so bad actually. It's kind of a decent price since you don't find that game very often. We got Romancing Saga there, 5 bucks. Some random Japanese game. We got uh, Power Athlete, 4 bucks. Never heard of that game even. There are so many Super Famicom games that I've never heard of. But that one I have, Dragon Ball. And here is Return of the Double Dragon, 18 bucks. Not a uh, bad price at all actually. It uh, definitely works, and it's a great game if you haven't played it. Uh, a beat-em-up game, a little bit slow, but still really good. More good games, Papa Vakun there, 6 bucks, really good platforming game. And uh, Pilot Wings, of course, classic. Can be yours for 8 bucks. And here we got the almighty Super Mario RPG, a game of its own caliber, 6 bucks. You should definitely play that if you want the unique Mario adventure. And over here we can see all the boxed stuff and uh, yeah, here's the store in general. There's a lot going on here on the shelves. They're filled from uh, ceiling to floor. And uh, it feels kind of messy actually. It's like all the games are stacked up beside each other and there's really no categories or anything. You just have to look closely yourself and uh, try to find what you're out for. We got a PSP here, the first version of it, 50 bucks, maybe a little too pricey, in my opinion. And here we have a PS2 game, Phantom of Kingdom, never heard of this, but uh, cool big box. And if we take a look further, there is uh, PS1 games stacked all over. As you can see, there's uh, a lot of this going on here and uh, more CD-based games coming up. But uh, let's try to pull out some good titles. Not sure what this is, actually. Kind of weird cover, but we got Chrono Trigger here. An outstanding game, but uh, way too much loading times between areas there. So uh, play it on uh, Super Famicom or... Uh, DS instead. What else is here? Whoa, Ruri Kenshin. I used to love the anime back in the days. I had no idea there was a PS1 game. A fighting game, okay. I uh, gotta check this one out later. My guesses are that it's probably not that good. Otherwise I would have heard about it. But uh, let's keep looking down here. It seems like there are some... Uh, game books, magazines for games and uh, yeah not sure what this is actually it's seems kind of random but yeah it's probably some game related comics or books that's cool that they have that here but let's uh, go back to the other side where the Nintendo stuff is we got some Game Boy games here and uh, down here some Game Boys in various condition. Game Boy Color going for 48 bucks. Seems uh, a little too much, I think. And the original Game Boy, 55 bucks. 
That's uh, that's too much, even though the condition was really good. But uh, here we got some random things laying here. Bomberman metal case. Pretty cool. Never seen this actually. And uh, another Game Boy case from a Japanese game. That's pretty cool. Let's uh, see if we can find any cool games. Pokemon Silver complete. Good condition. 2300 yen. So uh, not that bad actually. And up here we got a lot of Neo Geo AS games. I was looking through off camera and uh, it's the usual titles, you know, Fatal Fury Special, Samurai Shodan 1, uh, and the prices were okay. Pretty much the same as if you would get them on eBay. And here we got some Wii games, and uh, Wii U, and even Virtual Boy up here. Not many games for it though. And here is the beautiful sight of the Super Famicom games on the top. Um, but I think we should round this up now, maybe. Let's uh, take a look at some last games. Let's dive into the Famicom box here. With all the cheaper games. Let's see if we can find anything nice in here. Something worth playing at least. Mario Open Golf. And uh, another golf. Maybe not my favorite golf games. I uh, much prefer the uh, Mario Golf on N64 and uh, also the one on GameCube was really good. We got Pac-Man here and uh, a complete pinball. Pretty nice box. Very simplistic. But yeah, now you guys seen this shop. It's a very traditional looking small shop here in Japan. And uh, let's take one more peek here on the other side. So it's uh, all about books and CDs here. Looks pretty much the same. Pikachu is still sitting here, welcoming everybody to the shop. So yeah, if you're into Japanese books and CDs, you could also do some uh, hunting for that here as well. And the last glimpse of the console shelf. Absolutely beautiful, don't you guys think? But yeah, my summary of K-House would be that the prices are decent. Uh, not much better than Super Potato, just in some cases. Uh, but it seems like they're not cleaning the stuff as much as Super Potato. So uh, if you want something working in the best condition possible, you're better off going to Super Potato. And if you prefer cleaning it yourself, saving a few bucks, then K House could be worth looking at. And as you guys could see there, there was a whole store of Gachapon, or Capsule Station, as it's called. Looks pretty cool. But yeah, that's it for this time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy these kind of videos. See you next time. Bye!